Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing our point and click adventure series with episode 4 of the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. If you missed the other instalments, please do go back and check them out. The story is actually quite a good one. Alright, let's get back into it. Enjoy what you're about to see, put your feet back, kick them up, do whatever you want, get cosy. Let's, let's continue this story. I'm sorry to ask this Mr Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye, it's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of value as a deposit. I'll give it back to you at the end of your stay, when it will be time to pay the piper. I found Mr. Shoulders home, thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful! So you've met our vicar then? Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, did old Leonard apologise for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the barrow? No, sorry. I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. Goodbye. See you soon. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Most agreeable. I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Good day, sir. There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. Hello. I really must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found oh. digging around in those things. Goodbye. Sarah. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. But my favourite would have to be the Lancashire Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. In Newcastle, of course. Well... That's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. I 
couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chinwag, our Henry. He certainly does. I don't think anyone is home. <sighs> Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rear wheels are powered by coupling rods. Would you believe? The boiler had two flue tubes. Two! There were nothing like it. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Curses. I'm starting to feel somewhat tipsy. I'm here to excavate Hobbs Barrow, not Hobbs Barrels. Henry Long can talk, can't he? <laughs> He's a colourful character. The man drinks like a fish. He certainly does. I've seen him drink this place dry and still be up to tend his garden at sunrise. The man can truly hold his ale. Goodbye. See you soon. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. Bugley is the latest of many additions to the Midland Railway line. Speaking of change, I hear the whole frontage of Derby Station is being rebuilt. Designed by an architect by the name of Tubshaw, if I remember correctly. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. There's nothing else... I'm not sure they would be in. Hello. Good day. Goodbye. Don't be a straight. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. It really is great to have someone new to talk to. I've so many more stories to share. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. Good day. Hello, miss. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hello. Good day. Why did you call Lord Panswick wretched? He hides in that manner of his and cares not for his people. I've heard stories whispered in the pews, you know. What kind of stories? That he shoots people on sight. Anyone that strays onto Panswick Manor. Good grief! Yet he will walk into the plough and furrow and bar ale for all and be hailed as our protector. <laughs> I answer to God, and God alone. 
forgive me, pet. I shouldn't get so worked up. Not at all. I appreciate your honesty, Mrs. De Plancy. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. They are still locked. I've no time for such things. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. It's locked. Wally took Myrtle. Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes. My favourite. Mummy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm Daddy's favourite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes, but don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Please find Myrtle first, I miss her. I will. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally... Or maybe poor Myrtle... I'm going to... Where do you live? Uh, may... Or maybe poor Myrtle... I'm going to... Goodbye. Bye, miss. Hey! Stay away from that! It's bad luck to touch the Ammon's horn. I'm serious. Uh, fine. No doubt home to many a woodland creature. Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Good day. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? 
That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin. You don't know what she can be like. Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells. You'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that doll back. That will just bring bad luck for all of us. Are you sure you don't know anything about Hobbs Barrow? I would very much like to find it. No. Goodbye. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. I have nothing else to ask for the time being. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. It really is great to have someone new to talk to. I've so many more stories to share. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. There's nothing else I wish to dis- Peculiar name, the Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. That is not coming off. Mr. Shoulder must have dropped the matching glove last night. What was he doing in the alley? Rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. Oh, you're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Oh, you're a sweet little thing, aren't you? He looks much too unruly to be picked up. The devil's t I don't wish to dig it up.
I'm not sure if these are po- It looks like something has been buried in the middle. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madame. Yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madame. Hello, fairies. There you are, Josephine. I won't let the foxes eat you. Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's a gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? must be Jane's ragdoll. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. It's the wrong type of lock for this to work. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! Come back! It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. They aren't mine to take. I can't pry the fossil from the rock with my bare hands. The trowel is too blunt to chip away at the rock. The hairpin isn't strong enough to remove the fossil. Jane? Jane, get out of there! 
Don't make me come in. Fine. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand, uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> Jane! Jane? Jane, come out this instant. I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Curses. The useless thing blew out. Jane? <laughs> There's nothing else I wish to discuss at the moment. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I have one just like this. I have one just like this. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. I've stored my case in there, a box within a box. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. I've too much to do today to waste time sleeping. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. I have no use for ashes. I have one just like this. I'm not sure what that would achieve. This must belong to someone. I should leave it alone. I can probably get this door open, but I can't do it with this man standing here watching my every move. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. It really is great to have someone new to talk to. I've so many more stories to share. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. I can't try to pick the lock whilst Mr. Long is standing there. Hello? 
Y yes What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets once. My friend says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. You think that's true, miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? That like a wheelbarrow? Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. This must belong to some... Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Go on then, lass. Follow me. So then, it turns around and says, Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, Because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby, a miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Wait. Where is my money? It's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Picks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. 
It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. I'd rather not go into those horrible toilets again. Right, so let's bring this episode to a close. We found out quite a lot. We've managed to actually get into the post room. We spent a bit of a time trying to get that guy drunk, but we needed Cyril there so we could have a little bit of a... get them a little bit of a hoo-ha while we managed to get in there and uh, get our stuff back. So if you enjoyed this series, if you enjoyed this episode in fact, please do drop a like. Let me know in the comments what you think of the whole series. And uh, please do consider subscribing. It means a lot to me and it really does really help the channel grow. Right, so we'll leave it there and I'll see you in episode 5 where we can see where this story leads us. Until then, take care.